I really want the long version just so I can feel like sort of glamorous as I'm moving through the house cleaning toilets and whatnot. Hi, I'm Drew and welcome to my sewing channel. In my last video, I posted a vintage pattern haul and talked a little bit about my sewing plans for the upcoming year. Um, the pattern that I'm doing today, however, was not included in that haul because this pattern just arrived today. It's from the 1960s. I have not made anything from the 60s and I'm usually not that into the 60s patterns, but this one I was. It looks gorgeous, simple to make, quick, and comfortable, which is something that I'm totally into. So my goals for these first couple months of the year is to make things that are cute, but still really comfortable that I can kind of wear around all day where I still feel like I got dressed and I can get in and out of the bed as I see fit. And of course, I want things to film in. I said to myself that when I got to a thousand subscribers, which I'm almost there, thank you all, that I would become more active and more predictable and have a upload schedule that I kind of stick to and follow. So in the comment box below, if you guys could give me some ideas about a good day to post or what you would like to see from me or any just questions, comments, feedback that I could use to um, grow this channel a little bit, that would be greatly appreciated. And so if you're still here, thanks for watching. I got through all of that. Now let's get through the pattern. I'm gonna make version one. So it's long, which I really like. It makes me feel like super fancy when I have on a long dress. I'll show you the fabric now. This is me ironing it. And I'm using the couch in our family room slash my sewing room to bump the wrinkles out before I get started. I was expecting this to be a very quick, easy make, but by now I should know that my makes never really go that way. But for this one, the most trouble I had was with the fabric. I thought that I had enough and as I was pulling out the pattern pieces preparing to cut I realized that for the long version I don't have enough I it didn't list for the width of my fabric so I was kind of like guesstimating and thinking that I had enough my options were to do the shorter version but I really want the long version just so I can feel like sort of glamorous as I'm moving through the house cleaning toilets and whatnot so I've decided to switch up my fabric and I don't have enough of anything really and or anything that I like. And so I'm going to do the half, the different print version. I'm going to do half with this hot pink polka dot and then the collar and the other half just at in the backs out of these solids because I have a few of these. So, um, yeah, and that's really inexpensive fabric. So it should be a cool dress still and a wearable mock-up too so um, if I want to make this pattern again out of something um, nicer that I have more of so yeah I'm gonna lay this fabric out iron it prep it do all of those things that I had done to the other fabric that I don't have a lot of and then I'm gonna get it cut out and so just rolling with it completely different fabric other fabric I didn't have enough of it either so this is what I had it's not ideal it's not really what I wanted to use but it's what we got so the first thing I have to do is the center front seam and then the center back seam and I'm gonna do that now so working on the center front and center back seams later on I get so confused and I'm like how are you supposed to be able to tell the front from the back and it's because the back was supposed to be left open above the notches to be able to insert the zipper this I did not do, but I was able to distinguish the difference between the front and the back because one had one notch cut in it and the other had the double notches cut in it. So I was able to kind of fix that problem, but yeah, I had to unpick it to insert the zipper. And next up is the sleeves. And these were so foreign to me. I have never seen sleeves cut like this and I was a tad bit intimidated when I first got working with them. But the first step was to stay stitch the edge. Sleeve facing piece, I had to turn up one fourth of an inch on the unnotched edge. So not this edge, but the unnotched edge and um, stitch that. Now, time to attach these. There's a notch right here on the sleeve and then a notch on the facing. 
And so I matched all of that up, pinned it in place, and then took it to the sewing machine. As I'm sewing up this dress, I am wondering exactly what is it about the 60s style fashion that I didn't like. And I don't think it was that I disliked it. I think I was just more into 1950s silhouette. Um, the wiggle skirts are totally my thing and the dresses with the really cinched in waist and the flared out skirt. I just really love the silhouette. As I'm acquiring more 1960s patterns, I am noticing that this is where the fashion starts to be more functional. Um, things are more flared out, more easy to wear, more relaxed. And this is exactly the type of fashion that we need right now. But I would love to hear your favorite decade of vintage fashion, so please leave it in the comment box below. So now back to work on these really weird sleeves. So with right sides together, I had to pin the front to the back and the back to the front. Which was a little awkward at first. It took a little maneuvering to kind of figure out how exactly this was supposed to be. But once I figured it out, it made perfect sense and it was easy to get it stitched in place. Okay, so I got that sleeve put in. It wasn't as weird as I thought. I just had never um, done them like that before. And so now what I have to do is this. The seam actually extends into a dart. That's what these notches were. And so pin that as well. And so that's a dart. And this is the shoulder seam. So, yeah, I'm going to do that on both sides. And I realized that that dart definitely had a purpose. It was to give some shape to the sleeve. And so once I figured all that out, it was time to work on the collar. So I applied interfacing to one of the collar pieces, put them right sides together, and then stitched it together, leaving the notched edge open. And of course, clip the corners and trim the seams down really good so that way I could turn it to the right side and give it a good pressing. As I was turning it, I realized that I had clipped some of the seams too closely and I had a little bit of a hole in it. So I had to take this back to the sewing machine, repair the hole, and then I was able to press it all out and it's looking pretty good. So this is me giving it a really good press. And then of course I, uh, stitched in the ditch so that way the facing wouldn't roll. And so now attaching the collar on the outside I pinned the collar to the neck edge matching centers and small dots and I eased the collar to fit by pulling up the machine basting stitches that I put in and then baste it to the neck edge. Once the collar was all in place I stitched up the side seams and then moved on to the zipper, which I had to unpick the center back seam to be able to put the zipper in because for some reason I didn't leave it open um, when I was sewing up those seams, but unpicking it was an easy fix. Got that done and then moved on to the zipper. It went really well, which sometimes for me they don't, but I was so pleased with how easy the zipper went in that I kept wondering was I doing something wrong because this was just way too easy, but the zipper came out really well. After which I moved on to the side seams and the underarm seams, and then they had to be left open between the dots, as I show you here, for the pockets. Pockets are our friends, and this was my second time adding pockets to a garment, so it wasn't as foreign to me as it was the first time around but this method was a little bit different where I had to on the inside with the right sides together pin the pocket sections to the opening edges in the side seams matching medium dots and then with the right side together stitch the pocket sections together so it was a little um different a little finicky but once I got everything laid properly and pinned in place, I was able to just stitch them on one at a time and then stitch them together. My only regret with the pocket is that I didn't make it a little bit bigger, which I'm sure would have been easy to just extend that pattern piece to make it a little bigger to be able to hold 
uh, an iPhone, that would have been ideal, but it's uh, a lesson learned. And next time I will definitely be making sure that the pockets can hold the phone and the other things. So here she is all finished. I have her hanging so that way I can hem her tomorrow. And here she is with the belt that I added. Um, I definitely want the belt to give it some shape. And so I'm really happy with this. I'm going to go slip it on, well, after I hem it, so that way um, I can show you guys what it looks like on. 